Hey guys, it's Twitter Maxwell here, yet again with another edition of TNA Making an Impact. I uh, can all apologise for no episode on Friday. Started a new job, uh, we're into the full time hours now, and it's just really been balancing everything. And the best chance I had to record would have been Friday night, and of course that was Scotland v England, so uh, a lot of beers for me. But as I say, we're back, hopefully back into the routine. This is our go home show for Against All Odds, which will be the next episode coming up on Friday. So 14 segments, just really building up all our feuds. A lot of feuds will end at Against All Odds as we then firmly kick on the road to lockdown. So 14 segments, we'll kick on to it. And hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Here we go, TNA, make an impact. So I sold out 5,000 fans at the Boutwell Auditorium. Uh, basically what we're going to start off with is just lots of guys arguing in the ring. We've got the rivalry between Mike Bennett, Brian Cage against Mysterio and Bobby Lashley, so they're arguing. And then obviously the Tag Team Championship has a bit of a, a bit of a problem between Abyss and Crazy Steve, the Decay, against Bobby Roode and James Storm. So these all come to a head. And basically what happens here is this book's uh, main event for tonight, which is going to be a 10-man tag. It's going to be Mike Bennett, Brian Cage, Abyss, Crazy Steve and EC3 against the team of Mysterio, Lashley, Beer Money and the champion, Fergal Devitt. So a good C plus 16 to start the show. It starts off with a strong start. It gets the crowd hotter. Bobby Lashley was good. And two storylines advance with the Miracle Machine and Destroyer storyline, unfortunately. Losing a little bit of heat. But from a positive perspective, Abyss and Bobby Lashley develop better performance skills, whilst James Storm gets better at acting. So overall, pretty happy with that. Our opening contest sees a decent matchup, and it's the BC, the team of Adam Cole, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson defeat Ricochet and the Bro Men in 1350 when Adam Cole defeated Jesse by pinfall with a flying crossbody. Again, the BC getting another win, a good bit of momentum. Ricochet losing to Kenny Omega's teammates going into their matchup then on this Sunday. A solid C plus 66. Adam Cole was slowed down by injury. Uh, the match got the crowd hotter. Poor performances from the Bro Men. A 37 for Robbie E and a 28 for Jesse. Very solid 62 from Ricochet and a very impressive 70 for Nick Jackson. 69 for Matt and a 75 for an injured Adam Cole. So he's just going to get better and better. Adam Cole improves Rumble and performance skills. Jesse and Flying. And Matt Jackson and Technical, as I say, will have something hopefully for the BC at the pay-per-view. And Ricochet takes on Kenny Omega at, against, all oh, odds. And of course we have Kenny Omega coming out saying, you just lost to my teammates. I'm just as good as them, if not better. I'm the champ, you ain't going to beat me. I'm going to clean you out like the rest of this division. That's the C-57. minus Next up, and about that had some decent wrestling. We didn't have much heat. David Richards defeated Eli Drake in 749 with the Shooting Star Press. C65, a basic win for the, uh, David Richards here. He gets the 70 in ring performance to the 44 of Eli Drake. Eli Drake improves technical skills, but another win for one of the American Wolves. Next up, and about that had some decent wrestling, but little heat. Gail Kim defeated Tanya in 959 with an inverted stomp facebreaker. Or eight. Eat defeat, I think she calls it. C minus 54, it's okay. Gail Kim a 54, Tanya with a 41, obviously, we have to build her up. But it's a good victory, and it gives us a better idea of this storyline as we've got the knockouts firmly split down the middle, divided in two. Negatives here, just the both ladies holding back, but hopefully that will not be the case on pay per view. After the matchup, Gail Kim is celebrating her win, Ali's in there enjoying the victory with her, and then the team of Sienna, Brittany Knight and Tanya run in and they beat them down. So a D minus 38 there, the heels have the numbers advantage in this segment. We lost a little bit of heat. This however saw the return of Jade, she's coming down to help Gail Kim and Ali, and it turns out to a six women brawl. Basically all the way to the back. So a D minus 40. I wasn't gonna use Kelly in English, but I thought let's use Jade. Let's get as many of these knockouts over as possible. And we'll be looking at a six women tag, six knockout tag. 
at against all odds. Next up, and about the had decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Shibata defeated Spud in 5.51 by pinfall. C-54 because these don't click his opponents, but an easy victory for Shibata nonetheless. A 27 for Spud and a 60 for Shibata. He improves in flying skills. The champion has a dominant victory. And a few negatives there for Spud. Basically what happens next is Shibata beats down Spud before out of nowhere from the back. David Richards, Eddie Edwards make the save. You know, the two of the Wolves just decided enough is enough. We're not standing for this. So a C-59. Both the Wolves have got gimmicks that are getting stale. we we'll to change that. Spud looked lost. Shibata came across well. The tag team storyline, as I say, I need to change that. Lost a bit of heat. So why are the Wolves out against Shibata? Well, Brandy Rhodes decides she's going to come out and she says this Sunday the TNA National Championship will be on the line. It's going to be Shibata against both David Richards and Eddie Edwards in a triple threat match for the championship. So both Wolves get their opportunity where they're going to, have to face each other while doing so. So a C-57, not amazing, not horrible, but I say just building up the prestige of the TNA National Championship. We then have a Chris Jericho highlight reel. He basically hosts his interview segment with Bram. We basically just talk about their feud and all that. It gets very personal and it ends up with a brawl to the back. Just complete mayhem. And these two will go at it one final time at against the odds. So an A90 here. The best versus Bram story in advances and gained heat. Hopefully that benefits Bram with his overness overall. Jericho continue to be the goat in these kind of segments. We hear from EC3 saying tonight he's going to pin Fergal Devitt and at this Sunday as he's going to be the champ, he's going to prove that Carter still run wild in Impact Wrestling and he adds a bit of heat to the TNA World Heavyweight Championship storyline and a B-76 rating. And although the show didn't seem too star solid, it's because we did have a 10-man tag main event as said earlier. And it was about they had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Because it was Fergal Devitt, Beer Money, and Mysterio and Lashley defeating EC3 with Decay, Bennett, and Cage in 2140 when Devitt defeated Crazy Steve with a Brain Buster. A B 76 for the rating, not too bad. Mike Bennett's getting better his gimmick as Crazy Steve needs a gimmick change, so we'll look at that. Lashley with a 68, a 72 for Mysterio, a 73 for Rude. 48 for James Storm, so he's massively declined. 84 for Fergal Devitt. 56 for uh, Mike Bennett. 52 for Brian Cage. 51 for Crazy Steve. 73 for Abyss. And then 80 for EC3. So Crazy Steve's gone a good bit. It's still just a case of continuing to build up him, uh, Brian Cage, and Mike Bennett. James Storm, as I say, is in a bit of a decline. Three storylines advanced for this segment. The World Heavyweight Championship gains heat. Performance upgrades for Bobby Roode, Mike Bennett, and Brian Cage. Lashley improves technical, Mysterio, and Rumble. Overall, the baby faces prevail, and end of the show, we just have EC3 and Fergal Devitt brawled to the back. So, again, that way, just having everybody brought to the back, so at least all our main events with that option. We don't really know who's going over at the moment. I'll probably decide on the day when booking it. So, we can spring a few surprises. So overall the show got a B78, so again, way over what we need to get and increasing our popularity in 18 regions. Matches that we definitely have booked in for against the Lords, we've got Bennett and Cage versus Mysterio and Lashley. That may change their fatal four way. As I say, I'll see what I'm gonna do with that. We've got the Decay versus Beer Money one last time. We've got Ad uh, sorry the Ricochet versus Kenny Omega for the X Division Championship. We've got David Richards versus Shibata versus Eddie Edwards. We've got the six man tag, six women tag, sorry, Gail Kim, Ali and Jade against Sienna, Tanya, and Britannia Knight. Chris Jericho versus Bram. And of course, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship on the line between Devitt and EC3. And probably something as well between Drew Galloway and Magnus. I think I put that there's a tables match. So we've got that as well to hopefully end their feud. And he gives a lot of fresh storylines. Coming out of this and going into our next pay-per-view. 
So overall, I'm still pretty happy. It's a good uh, rating again. It's again keeping the momentum going. See if we get anything else there that helps us. Not particularly. But we really struck gold with the show. And Mike Ben has an incident. And he has fucked everything up. By being a steroid user. So all I can do is suspend him. Nope, oh, I can't even suspend him. Uh, I'll need to find him. There's nothing else I can really do there, you know, he's a steroid user, I can't send him to rehab. But the thing is, uh, it means he'll still be there for his matchup uh, this Sunday. So, a bit disappointing to see that. Hopefully, you know, he learns from it. He'll have a little bit of a morale issue, which is a shame. But see, we're doing okay, as I say, momentum's good, prestige is okay, size is in a very good position, ticking along slowly. And hopefully, you know, we've got a lot of good matchups that can get a good rating. Let's say we can start afresh uh, going into against all odds. Then it's a good build up to Victory Road. Four weeks to that. And then a six week build to lockdown. So hopefully we can hear a lot of new rivalries and hopefully some proper intense feuds. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you as always for watching. As I say, if you do want to get involved in TW, look at yourself. You can get the game on the uh, Grey Dog software website. Uh, to get involved in YouTube, I recommend posting on their forums and posting on the Fantasy Booker subreddit, good places for advice and to get started. And of course, if you get any comments in this, any comments on your own save, put them in the uh, comments section below. Any likes, shares, etc. are always deeply appreciated as well. And hopefully, I'll see you next time for Against All Odds. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.